This morning we want to start with the section on Bhojanga. This is also an extremely important part of this uh, whole uh, discourse on uh, meditation. Sometimes uh, we uh, memorize this list very easy. Only seven uh, words. Just memorize. And uh, mm, sometimes meditators uh, have this uh, checklist in their mind. They sit and they will this is mindfulness of uh, factor of enlightenment of mindfulness. This is mindfulness factor of uh, investigation check. This mindfulness <laughs> factor of effort check. Mindfulness factor of uh, uh, joy check. Then the mindfulness factor of uh, tranquility check. Mindfulness factor of uh, concentration checked. <laughs> Mindfulness factor of equanimity checked. This is not a question of checking list, memorizing and checking. This is a question of uh, you can check without understanding without mindfulness you can check the list also you can check the list with understanding and with mindfulness now here we train ourselves to be mindful so we mindfully try to check this list it is not sitting in one place and checking the list it is uh, seeing the development of all of them in our practice. We start uh, <clears throat> mindfulness of uh, enlightenment factor of mindfulness. Enlightenment factor of mindfulness. Bodhjanga, bodhi, anga. Bodhi means uh, enlightenment. Anga is a factor. That is why it is called enlightenment factors. All these seven are called enlightenment factors. That means when we practice them, in fact, uh, all we have to do is to practice only one. We have to practice only one. Which one is that? Mindfulness. <coughs> we keep practicing. This entire discourse is the practice of mindfulness. We We practice mindfulness. Uh, this course starts saying that uh, uh, a bhikkhu goes to a forest, a solitary place, sit under a tree or quiet place and sit in cross-legged and start focusing mind on the breathing. That is only one small fraction of the practice. And that is the only thing many people do. Then they, they say, I don't have time to sit. That means I don't have time to meditate. So sitting and meditation are synonymous for people. Because without sitting, no meditation. Sitting, that is why some places we hear, uh, we read lists saying sitting groups synonymous with meditating group. They don't uh, even call it meditation. They don't use meditation any, in any other posture. 
any other place, any other time, only sitting. And therefore, if somebody does not sit to meditate, he is not a meditator. So you go to sit. If you have no time or place to sit, you are done. That is your bad karma. Cannot meditate. <laughs> so, when we look at this sutra, Buddha shows us the way to practice mindfulness. In the first section, he said, sit down and focus mind on the breath and see the breath inhaling, exhaling, long, short. And gain some feel of mindfulness, some feeling. What is happening inside? Be, my, be aware of it. And there he gave the whole uh, outline for the entire practice. In that little section, he gives the entire plan of mindfulness practice. He said, uh, in Pali, since you all have the book in front of you, I don't mind using the Pali <laughs> because you can <laughs> refer to that. Uh, in the first section, he said, uh, Kaye Kaya Anupasi Virati Atapi Sampajanu Satima Vineye Loke Abhija Domanasan. This sentence gives you the entire plan. Entire plan. Kaya Anupasi Virati. You replace it with uh, feeling. Consciousness or Dhamma. Uh, the meditator stays, Viharati means lives, not sitting in one place. The word Viharati itself is a very important thing. The place where uh, monastics live is called Vihara. The temple where the Buddha lives is called Vihara. So the word viharati, there you can see, use the see, you can see the word viharati. Viharati means lives. So sitting in one place, he lives in that place. That means that is at that place he lives. Although he is sitting, he lives. So the word living or uh, the viharati is applied to everything. So, when the body uh, be, uh, uh, he, he, Buddha simply does not use their nisidati. Kaya kaya nupasi nisidati. <laughs> nisidana means sitting. He does not say, watching the body you sit. He doesn't say that. He say, watching the body you live. So, whenever you live, you live with the body. See the word kaya kaya nupasi on page uh, uh, five. Pasi viharati. Viharati means lives. Uh, I'm not trying to teach Pali this time, but I just want to use this to draw your attention to the way how we practice mindfulness. And therefore, these words that we use uh, are very important because they convey the Buddha's own message. We always have to look into the Buddha's direct message. For this reason, I uh, use these words. So, uh, then, uh, 
seeing the body kaya anupasi. Anupasi means ex, uh, in accordance with the body. That means not distorted body. Uh, not thinking this body is uh, beautiful, ugly, attractive, short, long, of this color, that color, and so forth. No. It, the body exactly as it is. In order to show this meaning, anupasi is used. Anukula means going along with the grain, the word anukula. Anugamana. Anugamana means gamana means going. Anugamana means going with. So the word anu means in accordance with exactly as it is. To convey this meaning, anu is given there. So kaya anu pasi viharati lives uh, anu pasi. Pasi means seeing. Seeing the body as it is. So then when we go to exp detailed explanations, you can see sitting at that time body is in that position, walking, body is moving, uh, standing, lying down, bending, stretching, whatever you put the body into any function, at that time, that you got to do with full awareness of what the body does, how the body is kept. Then he used another word, atapi. I want to mention these words in the in relation to. A, practicing uh, Vajjanga. Word Atapi means uh, effort. Effort is a factor of enlightenment. That is Virya Sambhajjanga. Sampajana is Dhamma Viche Sambhajanga, the investigation of Dhamma. Sampajana means knowing well. How can we knowing know well? Sampajana also in the same sentence. Same sentence, page 5, A. Satima. Next word is satima, is mindful, with mindfulness. Then, vinaya means discipline. What do we discipline? Intense greed, abhijja, covetousness, domanasa, disappointment. What happens? We cultivate, even in the same sentence we can see mindfulness factor of enlightenment in the rudimentary form, just mentioned casually. Mindfulness factor of investigation under the words Sampajanya. Mindfulness factor of effort, Virya. Mindfulness factor of uh, uh, concentration, abhijja, domanasa, when abhijja, domanasa, abhijja means intense greed, domanasa means hatred, disappointment. These are two factors that we overcome when we gain jhanas, concentration. So that is where you see concentration factor of enlightenment. And then, when these factors are developed, we will have uh, equanimity, 
Equanimity means uh, seeing with even mindedness, without any prejudice, any bias. When the mindfulness, when the concentration is going on very smoothly, next outcome of that is having a equanimous state of mind. All these are mentioned in this one first sentence. Now, and therefore, <coughs> Which is the result of abandoning abhijja dhormanas, uh, intense greed and hatred, abandoning by attaining, gaining concentration, when you cannot gain concentration with greed, nor can you gain concentration with hatred, when these two factors eliminated, you gain concentration. And outcome of concentration is, even when you go through the list of uh, factors of enlightenment, you can see, uh, when you gain concentration, you are equanimous, even because in the attainment of concentration itself, there is equanimity. Uh, when you practice effort, your sleepiness and drowsiness fades away. All these are implied in these words. Then uh, your restlessness and worry fades away when you discipline your mind. When you have clear comprehension, you discipline yourself, you have uh, your sleepiness and drowsiness fades away, when the uh, mind and mind is tranquil, your restlessness and worry fades away. So when you have full sampajanya, uh, mindfulness, you begin to see the truth of the body clearly, your doubt fades away. So these are implied. They are not given one by one as in the jhana attainment. But the, at the rudimentary form, I said, at the seed form, all these are implied at the very first sentence. So you keep practicing mindfulness, you walk mindfully. How we walk mindfully? Keeping the comprehension, clear comprehension, yonso manasikara in mind. That is, we walk mindfully to achieve a purpose. We sit mindfully to achieve a purpose. We talk mindfully to achieve a purpose. We eat mindfully, you e using Yonisho Manasikara, mindful reflection, we eat to achieve a purpose. So always we keep a purpose in mind. What is the purpose? Eh? Purify, the mind. Purify the mind. Overcome sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief and despair. To tread the right path, attain liberation by purifying the mind. The whole practice, this is the purpose. We always have to keep this purpose in mind. When we walk uh, very mindfully, we ask ourselves, why do I walk mindfully? Because I don't want the mind to be invaded by greed or hatred or confusion. So I let me walk mindfully. Let me talk mindfully so that mind will not be invaded by these uh, uh, defilements. Let me sit mindfully so that it will not 
possessed, obsessed by greed. And if the greed arises, then I become mindful, use mindful reflection, as I mentioned yesterday, to see the, uh, de- the, the, the pleasure I gain from the sensual pleasure, its danger, degradation, and so forth. This is the sort of uh, theme, the, the chorus, that we have to keep in mind all the time when we walk, sit, talk, eat, wear clothes, and uh, observe silence, lie down, stand up. In any position we put the body, we keep these purposes in mind and ask this question. Is it suitable, like that's what is called clear comprehension of suitability? We ask, is this training suitable for gaining that goal? Is my mind in this domain? What is our domain? Our body and mind. Not um, letting uh, our domain changes when we attain full enlightenment. Vimokko yasa gochara, enlightened person's uh, gochara is vimoksha, liberation. Unenlightened person's gochara is this body and mind. Body, mind, and what involves in this body and mind, that is that person's domain. When you attain enlightenment, you have you move your domain from this lower level to higher level, and then you attain full enlightenment, your domain is different. When you attain, say, uh, arahantud, your domain is animitta, appanihita, sunyata. That means signlessness, directionlessness, and selflessness. Animitta means there is no sign of greed. Not seeing any sign of greed is your doorway, is your domain, is your objective. That means not to look for greed. Not to look for greed is your objective, is your domain. Not to look for uh, a particular place to establish the mind with uh, uh, suffering. Not to establish mind in any place where there is suffering. That is appanhita, non-establishing. A P P A. N I T I A H I T A A P P A N I H I T A A Apani Hita. First is A Nimitta A N I M M I T T A. Animitta, A N I M I T T A. Second is Appanihita, A P P A N I H I T A. Last is Sunyata, S U N N A T A, Sunyata. That means, first word means, a nimitta means, no sign of greed. Nimitta means sign. A nimitta means no sign. A panihita means establishing. A panihita means no establishing. Establish mind does not 
uh, go to any place where there is suffering. Where there is greed, there is suffering definitely. Then, sunyata means no self. So, the domain of when you go to higher level, your domain is greedlessness, sufferinglessness, and selflessness. When you are in full liberation, your domain is liberation, vimokka. V I M O K K H A vimokka. That is liberation. So, uh, as a uh, training or trainer or uh, the ordinary meditator, we have our body, feelings, perceptions, thoughts, and consciousness as our domain, our field. The, the where we work, we go out, go into this field, and work there. What do we do there? When we have body feeling and so forth, these five aggregates, how do we use them? What do we do with them to develop our mindfulness? We look at the body mindfully and see its impermanence, see the impermanence of the body, unsatisfactoriness of the body, selflessness of the body. Whether we are sitting, standing, walking, lying down, we must see these three factors, three characteristics. We must, if we cannot see all of them, at least we begin to see uh, impermanence, changes of the body. So, uh, this is our investigation. This is our mindfulness. This is our training of training in clear comprehension. This is our training of uh, understanding the suitable nature, suitability of our practice. And this is where we gain uh, clarity. That means we are not deluded. That is what is called clear comprehension of non-delusion. If we pay attention, remain mindful, investigate, and have mindful reflection, the body becomes very clear to us, and no doubt. So, the clear comprehension of non-delusion we practice. So, these are all practical, we are practicing them, not just a theory. We are practicing clear comprehension or non-delusion. By seeing the body that goes along with the feelings, perceptions, thoughts and consciousness. Feeling will not become uh, unclear to us. Feeling will become the domain. Feeling will become our suitable object. Feeling will become uh, uh, what do you call uh, uh, the object of uh, impermanence. Similarly, our perception becomes the object of impermanence. Uh, it is our domain where we work to gain this knowledge, uh, our awareness, clear comprehension and so forth. So, Using these five aggregates, we live every day. Morning, noon, evening, home, outside, inside, sleeping, lying down, eating, drinking, <laughs> working with people, you know, using our body and mind to see these things. 
and then we sometimes uh, uh, check into the parts of the body like uh, you know hair uh, head hair body hair and so forth analyze and break them down to various parts 32 and 40 32 are mentioned we can break them into 42 or you can break them into hundreds of different parts mentally and what you know whenever we want to watch the body parts we want to take one part at a time and focus the mind on, mind on it and see uh, how impermanent it is how unsatisfactory it is how selfless that particular part is so when we go through the through each part separately and then put together then we find the same thing what we find in parts we find in when they are together that means each of them is without self each of them is impermanent each of them is unsatisfactory that goes along with the, the elements uh, and so forth then uh, up to the last stage of our body then we become mindful of our feelings now I'm just running through the mindfulness training to develop to see how we uh, come to a stage where we can take a stock and see now my mindfulness is complete now I have mindfulness only when you realize that mindfulness is complete the next step evolves naturally that is why I say we have to practice only one that is mindfulness so we go to mindfulness of feelings we don't uh, we don't practice mindfulness of body now and then wait for 10 days or two weeks to practice mindfulness of feelings <laughs> you cannot do that because while you are watching the body you feel, you feel you cannot separate feeling from the body or you cannot wait for another time to practice mindfulness of feelings while watching the body you feel <clears throat> and then you will know even the feeling is impermanent no matter what feeling I have that feeling is very much like this body impermanent and also you don't uh, uh, keep uh, counting the number of feelings uh, although in for the sake of explanation for the sake of teaching we say there are so many feelings uh, this feeling that feeling and we don't uh, take a list and write down and remember the list no whenever whatever feeling arises at any time with when we are paying attention to the body we become aware of that particular feeling for instance you pay attention to the uh, body while walking you cannot keep the feeling behind when you walk you feel the walk while being aware of the movement of the body you become aware of the feelings as well as you as you pay attention to your movement you feel the movement uh, sometimes when you feel the movement you may hear a sound perhaps mind goes to the sound may not stay in the feelings of the body that time you become aware of the sound you know uh, your intention is to focus mind only on one thing but it doesn't happen various other things invade the, the mind when they invade we become aware of it and whatever you don't want to focus pay attention to that time let it go and return to your original uh, thing uh, suppose when you walk uh, your walking is uh, boring and tiring but you hear the sound 
you stay with the sound to see impermanence of the sound. That also is a bodily uh, involvement because you cannot hear the sound without the bodily involvement. And there you can see the impermanence of the sound that is uh, physical, impermanence of the feeling coming from the sound, uh, impermanence of your perception of the sound, uh, impermanence of the thought that arises along with the sound, and so you uh, get involved all the five aggregates along with the sound. Similarly, when you walk, you can become mindful of the body movement, and you become mindful of the feeling of that, and you become mindful of the perception of that, you become mindful of the fact that there is a movement, there is volitional formations, and you become aware of the fact that you are aware of it, that is consciousness. So all the five aggregates involved in any single activity, whether it is walking, listening, uh, whatever, eating, in eating all the five aggregates are involved, in talking, I cannot talk without all the five aggregates uh, getting involved. So uh, the problem is when we try to separate them, when we try to separate them, then uh, we get in, into uh, investigation, investigation of Dhamma. I will come to that later on. Let me finish this. Don't get into investigation when you're doing concentration. Uh, well, you're going to, in that, that is the only thing, you know, in the seven factors of enlightenment are the only list that happens in that order. It is very interesting. All other lists uh, you can pick from here and there. But the factors of enlightenment uh, follow that particular order, one after the other. That is why I say the first one we have to cultivate is mindfulness. And when the mindfulness is achieved, complete, perfect, then with that mindfulness we do investigation. Otherwise what we have is mindful reflection, yoniso manasikara, clear comprehension, all these things we have before we have investigation. But the investigation has, these things all have in the, the shadow of investigation. In mindful reflection, there is a shadow of investigation. Clear comprehension, there is a shadow of investigation. So we got to complete those things first, and then when the mindfulness is in a good shape, in a uh, almost in the state of perfection. Right. So uh, uh, all the aggregates are involved. Uh, feeling, perception, thought, and so forth. So we keep practicing, 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 practicing mindfulness first. And then, uh, when the mindfulness is uh, complete, it is called unremitted mindfulness. Unremitted mindfulness means mindfulness in uh, without any continuous, without eh? unremitting, unremitting mindfulness. That is, mindfulness flows with you all the time, without any break, without any rest, without any pause. It runs along with it all the time. So you are so fully, completely merge with mindfulness. You talk with mindfully, you talk mindfully, sit mindfully, eat mindfully, drink mindfully, wear clothes mindfully, go to bed mindfully. All the time it is there just like you are breathing. 
Breathing is used for the training of mindfulness because uh, once you, are, you develop your mindfulness, you breathe mindfully. You cannot separate your mindfulness from breath. Nor can you breathe without mindfully. Although breath goes on and on other times without mindfulness, but once the mindfulness is well established, every breath you breathe in will be with mindfulness. So that is the time your mindfulness is complete or perfect. You would, you would never breathe maybe in sleep without mindfulness. All other times, every breath you breathe in and out with mindfulness. Now, when, the, when you have perfect mindfulness, your mind, that is the time, you remember that simile I mentioned the other day, that is the time the mind is like a hot pan. Hot all day long. Buddha compared that state of mindfulness to a hot pan. And if any invading uh, defilement uh, you know, comes there, it immediately burns, burns into ashes right away. It is also like a lotus uh, uh, leaf. You pour water, there are some lotus leaves, we may try that. Put drop of water, it slowly roll down, it doesn't stay. Or duck's back. <laughs> water doesn't stay on the duck's back because of its oil. So the mindfulness is so in, so uh, intense and so clear, so good, so perfect, nothing unwholesome can stay there. It will be pushed to the edge. Uh, we'll get rid of the, from the mind. Let us have a short break. <laughs> we have not uh, done very much, but uh, this preparatory you know, discussion on the practice of uh, uh, seven factors of enlightenment is very important. Very important in the way because uh, most of the time we tend to memorize the list and sit down and say, I am mindful, I have this, 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 this. In 10 minutes, you are, you have practiced all seven factors of enlightenment. That is what normally uh, people tend to do. Uh, in order to avoid that kind of uh, misunderstanding, we want to do, spend a little time in discussing how it really happens. It happens. You are not just d d deliberately uh, forcing something into you when the, when the, uh, it is just like uh, uh, when uh, a woman is pregnant, when suitable time comes, baby must come out. She cannot push the baby in two months or three months because it is getting so heavy, very difficult, and she cannot think, let me get rid of this fellow. She cannot put, her, put the baby out. She has to wait. And the Buddha said the beautiful example is the chicken. Chicken lays uh, five, six, ten, eight eggs. And uh, she is so impatient, she wants to see the chicks. So she would turn and look and turn them, and then after a look and turn them, look and turn, she will never see the chick coming out. Why is that? Because she does not sit on the eggs with patience to uh, incubate, to hatch the eggs. Only when she sits long enough on eggs, 
when the eggs are warmed and you know, embryo is matured and the chick is ready to come out, the chick themselves peck on the shell with their tiny claws and beaks, they break the eggs and come out. Buddha said similarly, all these achievements will take place when the time comes. When the mind is ready, you get the next step. So the first thing is preparing our mind. What we have to do to prepare our mind, practice mindfulness. That is why mindfulness is so important of all these practices. Okay, let us have a break and then after 10 minutes come back, please.